All right, Matt from New England Creative here. This is our first behind the scenes live at a wedding. We are in Middletown, Rhode Island. Today's wedding is gonna be at the Castle Hill Inn in Newport. I've never done this. I'm excited to have you guys come along on a behind the scenes, how we film a wedding, what our process is, how we interact with the couple. Uh, we're here at the bride prep location, so we're gonna go in, say hi, and uh, yeah, just uh, follow along. Should be a good time. Let's go. I'm literally like uh, writing my vows right now real quick. Oh, okay, but no let, let me... Um... We'll just hang out. You just hang out, okay. Yeah, 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 no rush. All right, so we just um, got to the bride prep location. Bride is still getting ready, or not even getting ready, but early, early stages. So okay. just gonna kind of hang out and just covertly get people doing their thing. That's really it. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> I'm video, so. Uh, worse. Yeah, worse. <laughs> she said worse. So um, what I like to do in this kind of case is just, you know, come outside, get a little bit of B-roll, some nature stuff. It's a beautiful day here in Middletown. So here I'm just, uh, you know, getting a little bit of B-roll, cranking my shutter speed here, keeping my 1.4 aperture. Every wedding video has blowing leaves and trees. That's just kind of what what happens, you know? Just move just a little bit. I'm shooting in 24 frames, so I gotta be real careful. Actually, for this, I'll probably switch to 60, 60 frames and just get a little. That'll make my, uh, my hip motion <laughs> a little smoother if I need to slow it down. So for ride prep, people hanging out before she gets in her. I don't go too crazy. I like to prioritize more like natural conversations, like uh, the groom's mother painting her nails. I try to blend in with the surroundings instead of being constantly in everybody's face. People get scared around cameras, so I think it's important to capture more like the organic conversations, organic interactions, funny moments, people struggling to do things, struggling to tie ties, things like that. So I do a lot of lurking. You'll see me lurking a lot, creeping around. Anyway, you can kind of like add some additional perspective or mystery. So I look for windows, glasses, I don't know, mirrors, stuff like that to get different perspectives. I like this is adding like a really cool refraction into the frame that really couldn't be accomplished with just the lens, you know? So, I like me a good window pane, good mirror, whatever I can find. Champagne glasses work well too. I like taking champagne glasses and like putting them in the side of the frame. Beautiful. All right, we just got to the Castle Hill Inn here in Newport. First time here, amazing. Incredible views, like you got the Newport Bridge in the background, it's absolutely amazing. So, the ride's running a little late, so we're gonna be uh, just hanging out, setting up a little bit until she gets here. When she does, straight up to uh, get her in her dress, get everything ready for the first look, which is gonna happen in about an hour. So, uh, yeah, get the first look and then get ready for uh, the ceremony shortly after. Well, so while I have a little bit of a lull, I like to kind of sneak away and just get the drone stuff out of the way early if I can, just so that way like when the craziness starts happening, I've already kind of gotten it and I can put the drone away and not have to worry about it. That's my strategy with drone stuff. I don't get too crazy with it. I don't view drones as like a must have by any means, but uh, this venue is deserving for sure. I mean, you see a lot of like, head-on shots, and I don't know, it's not really a dynamic. What I try to do is to get some slow strafing. So I'll, I'll strafe around a subject and then also pan the camera up just subtly. I think it gives it more of a, like a dynamic kind of a look, as opposed to just like flying head-on at something just because it's easy. And it takes a little finesse with the joysticks in a way. Something in the foreground always kind of helps make the shot, I think, a little more interesting. Um, so I'm like just trying to get the chair moving in front of the table setting here. It looks really cool. So if I gotta get off autofocus here, go manual. The camera wants to focus on the 
chair and not the tablescape. So we're just scouting like a good first look location. Lighting's not so great, but we get the mic, once the groom shows up, get the mic on him and get him in place for first look. Turn to my side and look at Can we steal this time? You guys just kind of like get in close, have a little moment while we're all kind of just hanging out. Hey, Evan, can I see some of those treats, please? Yeah. I'm going to need that. Oh, right you're here. great. Right here? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Stay. Good boy, sit. Good boy, sit, stay. Who's a good boy? All the attention on good. him. All right, so we just did um, first look with the couple. Went really well. Got three different angles, one on a gimbal sort of down low, the other uh, myself on an 85 and Justin on a 70 to 200. They're doing family stuff right now. Um, usually get like a little bit of family stuff. I don't go too crazy. It's more uh, the photographer's sort of realm. Um, more important for them to get every iteration. So I'll get a little bit here and then we'll jump over and start prepping for ceremony. Ooh. <laughs> Beautiful. No, that's good. Yeah, yeah. All right, we got 15 minutes. All right, all right. While she's taking it. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Uh, All right, we're walking and talking again. All right, here we go. Go, smile, smile. A lot of head turning. Everybody smiles. Oh my God! Tree. Get ready to start the ceremony here. Um, already talked to the DJ. Um, the guy with the PA system, so I got everything. Um, gonna rock the Mix Pre, mix pre 3 with a XLR cable. Put a lab on the groom, lab on the officiant, and got 35 minutes before things start. Already got tripods locked down. Typically like to do one in the back, one in the front left, one in the front right, and then a gimbal cam. So, um, yeah, a lot of angles. And then uh, I've got one one camera here on my hip will uh, sort of roam around and get uh, guest reactions, parents, tears, all that stuff. I just got this Mix Pre 3 and I'm not quite sure ooh, how long the batteries last on double A's. I hear it's not too long. So I always bring a battery bank just because, well, the ceremony's gonna be short, but for speeches and reception, I always have my recorder plugged into a battery bank just so I can start recording and leave it recording. Just one less thing to worry about. Oh, there's Justin. Say hi to Justin. <laughs> they don't hear the, the microphone. Hello, everybody. How are you? <laughs> Get the good side. All right, guests are sitting down. We are about to start. Um, ride's going to come out from under the tent. I always like to get a good gimbal shot. New FX3 here can shoot in 120 frames, so get a nice, like, sweeping dress shot. Get that hero shot. Ooh. 
Woo. All right, that was fast. Shortest ceremony I think I've done in a long time. Um, cocktail hour right now. We have about 30 minutes before introductions, and we're gonna try to sneak the couple out too, so I'm gonna very quickly get lights set up, get all my uh, dance floor lights, talk with the DJ about getting audio, and then do uh, reception stuff, seven o'clock, let's go. So we're trying to get reception lighting set up. I run uh, two Fractalite 602s to V-mount batteries. I've been screwed one too many times hoping that a venue is gonna have power outlets. They don't always. So uh, I just bring these bad boys, connect my little uh, D-tap to four pin power, and uh, it'll, it'll stay lit the entire reception and more. These things will usually last around four hours or so. Um, super bright, as you can see. Uh, yeah, so we'll have one up in the front, close to the DJ here, and then another one probably in the opposite corner of the dance floor that uh, will be on the cheetah stand so we can move it around as we need to. This one will stay probably pretty static, uh, but I like having one light on a cheetah stand in case I need to change and adjust lighting just a little bit on the speech giver. Um, having one that's mobile is clutch. So we'll get these lights set up. I think we got five more minutes before we seal the couple for a couple sunset shots. And then uh, it's time for introductions and reception stuff. So smooth day, not too bad, lots of time. And uh, it's beautiful, so you can't ask for more. Let's go. Bridal party intros are starting in a minute. I'm gonna do a gimbal cam. Justin over here is gonna stay locked down on 70 to 200. And then we're gonna do a dance floor set. Speeches to come later. speeches, it's gotta be really quick. That's why we always bring our own mic stands so we can position them perfectly with our lighting. We've got our speech camera there. We're gonna have a dedicated bride and groom cam for the reaction. Um, don't get too crazy with it, just good lighting and good framing, that's it. So, wrapped up speeches. Uh, first dance is pretty smooth. That's like the most hectic thing. Anything involved with audio is like where, where me and my team get super stressed, but uh, it's behind us. Now we're coasting. Uh, after this, we'll do some parent dances, which will be a lot like the first dance, and uh, just some dance floor stuff. But uh, I think for the sake of the uh, behind the scenes, it's probably good enough for now. Thanks for coming along. I hope this was uh, valuable to you guys, and uh, we'll see you at the next one.